Hi there, my name is Ton Nguyen. I'm a Kent-based UK photographer and um, one of my passions is black and white photography. Um, you may have seen my first video um, around how to process images for street photography into black and white and um, I'm very thankful for those that uh, have enjoyed that video and have left um, positive comments. So. Um, this is my second and in this particular video we will try to um, process um, long exposure Im landscape images with an architectural element into black and white. Um, I have a particular likeness for long exposure and I love architecture and one of the things um, I like doing at the moment is emphasizing the, um, the lines and shapes of um, of a building or in this case a bridge. As you can see um, this is a, the famous Zeeland Bridge in Holland and it's got fantastic curves and lines and what I tried to do was to, to process it slightly different to what has been um, shown on the net before and try to, to stamp my own individual um, vision onto um, this particular image um, and we'll go through the process of how to do that. It's um, The processing is relatively simple. The important part is to make the selections. So if we move into Photoshop, uh, then I can tell you a little bit more about um, selections and how we go about things. Okay, so if we just remove this. So this is the uh, starting image. Uh, the only thing I've done to this image is apply uh, Nick Software's um, Define Tool um, so that I can remove um, noise and also hot pixels. For those that are used to shooting um, long exposures, you, you've come across hot pixels before, and um, they, no matter what you do, they're there. The only way you can get rid of them is either in software or you can use your camera's long exposure noise reduction tool which basically takes two images of um, the same ex um, uh, exposure and it subtracts the, um, the hot pixels um, from, from them. So unfortunately if in this image we did that I will be standing there for uh, 580 seconds for my first image and then have to wait another 580 seconds until I could take another photo. Um, this particular image was taken at uh, ISO 100 with a Nikon D800 using the 24 to 70 millimeter lens at 38 millimeters. Uh, this was taken in broad daylight and we achieved an exposure time of 579 seconds at f22 because um, I used the um, the fantastic format high tech pro IRND uh, neutral density filters. Um, I bought a set of these because, uh, because it fitted my 14 to 24 um, lens, which is quite, has a massive bulbous um, front element, and it was one of the few. Um, filter holders that was um, able to mount onto this lens. Um, I went. To, I didn't choose the, the Lee filter basically because you would be just restricted to uh, a filter for that one particular lens whilst the um, the format high tech and Lucroix system you c can use it on your other lenses via other adapters. So um, thumbs up to format high tech and Lucra for coming up with an ingenious system. So let's get back to the image. Um, most long exposure exposure images would appear like this, and because it's a raw file, it will look relatively flat. And we want the image to really pop. And how we go about doing that is first and foremost is to make selections. You are going to spend uh, maybe an hour or two making your uh, selections. I highly recommend using the, the pen tool and if you can afford it get a, a tablet. 
uh, it will make your life a whole lot easier. Um, I particularly use the, um, the Wacom Intuos 5 tablet which is a great tablet uh, and it has Wi-Fi capability it's, and for this particular image I've selected the sky the, the water and each individual component that makes up this particular bridge um, why do I do that? Because I wanted full control over how each part of the individual constituents would appear without affecting the whole image. So let's convert this into black and white first using Nick Silver FX Pro 2. Those that uh, have seen my uh, first video will know that um, I like to use presets um, as a starting point. Uh, my preset for street photography is the high structure, harsh and smooth, but that wouldn't apply for this particular image as I'm looking for a smooth, smoky, silky um, effect. And to me, from experience, um, I quite like the um, the, uh, the full spectrum um, preset for this. So we'll go for this particular full spectrum, and we'll click OK. Okay, so it's a black and white image. Um, it looks okay, still a little bit bland and wishy-washy and I'm sure that we can make this image pop a little bit more so my vision for this image is to have a lot of contrasting blocks of shapes and remove as much of the distracting elements and structures as possible so in this particular uh, part here, as an example in this part here uh, there's a lot of different grades of um, of grey and you've got all these elements here that's um, um, that's distracting to the eye so we want this to appear like a block of of, of, uh, of shade going into the horizon and we can do that quite easily with our selective um, um, <coughs> our processing so this two biggest elements is the sky and the water so we'll process them first so so let's go for the sky the as we go through this um, video tutorial you'll notice that there's only two things that I use to, to adjust my images with and that's basically the the curves adjustment and the levels adjustment as we will want this to go from light to dark. We'll start off with a curve adjustment. Let's get rid of this um, box here, and we'll darken the the midtones. So we just click on that, drag it down, and you can see the midtones go darker until we feel that that's um, where we want it to be. I think that's about right. So we reselect it again and we go and use the levels adjustment and we'll slide the um the the whites down. Let's darken that. Okay. And Okay. So quite like that. working for me so that's the sky and now let's select for the water and with water we'll probably just do a levels adjustment and so what basically we want is the water to appear a little bit brighter than it is at the moment So 
then it's contrasting against the bridge and also against the sky quite nicely. Okay, I think I like that. And now we'll go through each individual component of the bridge and adjust them accordingly. So let's start off from top down. Now, as I mentioned previously, um, I wanted this to appear like a, a solid band going into the horizon. So to, to achieve that, we need to um, close the gap between the, sh the, the, the different tones in this section. So we'll start off with a, a curve adjustment and we'll bring the mid tones down. Reselect that, and then we we'll do a levels adjustment. And in the levels adjustment, we'll bring the the brightness or the white tones down, so that we're starting to match up with the um, our darks and grays. And lighten up the blacks a little bit. So you can see we're coming closer together. There we go. And a little bit more. Okay. Okay, so I quite like that. And now we'll go and select this area here. So in my mind's eye, I, I see that this this white stripe to be a little bit brighter so it can really contrast between the grey tones here and what's going to be a, the darker shadows underneath. So let's load that selection up. And we'll just do a levels adjustment. And we just bring the whites up. There we go. And now we'll deal with the shadow area here. Again, with just the levels adjustment. Bring down some of the whites. Okay. And now here I see this as a much brighter white than it is at the moment. So we'll adjust it accordingly. adjustment. Again it's quite simple. We'll move the highlight slider up and also raise there. There we go. And that's to me that's quite pleasing. And we'll do the same for underneath the bridge. dark. So as you guessed it, it's going to be a, a levels adjustment and we're going to bring up the mid tones, we're going to bring up some of the dark tones and dampen down some of the, the whites. Okay, so already we're starting to get much more of a graphic and dramatic appearance to the bridge and it's starting to pop out because it contrasts a lot more against its background than it did previously. And then finally we'll select these stanchions and just darken that a little bit. So I quite like the appearance of that now. 
and as you can see if if you take the time and and make your selections it's um, actual processing is is um, very very quick uh, all we have left to do now is basically paint on light and we'll do that using a paintbrush and we'll set the paintbrush to about 30 percent uh, opacity and 30 percent flow and press Q for selection and we'll lightly paint on our selection and press Q again and because it's less than 50% uh, you always come up with this um, warning message um, not to worry about it click on the um, levels box Let's start the process of bringing up some more of the um, white there. So we'll drag that across. And okay. If, for an example, you don't like a particular area and you want to remove it, so as we're in the selected mode, uh, if we paint with black, black will remove um, those areas that you don't want. So, so now we can start to focus. Basically, we're focusing light and painting light and taking away darkness where um, we want to. So, I want this area here to be a bit more lighter. So you can be as artistic as you want, painting lights and darks in there, but we'll um, leave it at that. But as you notice, because we've been, um, we've started to make changes to this area here, so let's reverse that. Okay, so basically, because we're painting black, that will reverse that we did previously. There we go. And the other thing you notice, because we've been changing gradients or tones and such, um, we've started to have this banding pattern where there's been tonal change and we need to fix that. So there's, there's quite an easy way of doing it. So let's say, for example, I'm happy with this, the changes we've made here, and um, so if you press Control sh Alt Shift E, so it will make up a layer from everything below that. So now we've got this layer. We'll start working on that to get rid of the banding patterns. So the banding patterns occurs in the sky, and it's also occurred in the water. So initially. Uh, an easy fix for this is by adding noise so we'll select the water it's coming a little bit closer see the banding pattern there 
and then we we'll go to filter add noise and we'll go with Gaussian blur and around between 2 and 3 percent is sufficient and as you see the um, the, the, uh, the banding has disappeared completely so we'll click OK and we'll do the same for the, the sky noise add noise but with the sky we'll need less of it I think it's two percent is fine there we go and all of that uh, changes will not affect the actual bridge structure itself so we'll deselect that so the other thing you'll notice um, is where we've made significant changes uh, we're starting to get a, like a halo effect um, most probably won't notice it that much but um, if you zoom in closely enough you can see this area of, of lightness here and there's a quite an easy fix to that so if we go to healing brush tool We'll make sure we change it to darken and zoom in and we'll make a selection and anywhere that's lighter than that particular selection it will darken as you can see there Worked very well. We can go back and use the spot healing brush and get rid of it. Okay, and there's one. <coughs> so now we've no longer have those um, halos, and also. I can see there's an annoying container ship here. So, spot here and brush, we'll get rid of that spot. <coughs> so, um, that's a very quick tutorial on how to uh, process um, this type of long exposure landscape image. And um, the processes involve such a selection and how to use Silver FX Pro 2 to, to form the basis of um, your processing work. It's um, very easy, very quick. All you need to know or news is um, Silver FX Pro 2 and the levels and curves adjustment. But as long as you've made accurate um, selections in the first place, you will have absolute control over the whole image uh, by tweaking the individual components of the image you're able to then um, bring contrast and life to an otherwise flat appearing image. Um, I've hoped you've learned something from this tutorial and uh, feel free to, to like it and share it um, with friends um, and also leave comments as well. Uh, if you want to see some of my other works please feel free to visit my website at um, www.lightreflex.co.uk and um, if, um, if you'd like to see more please feel drop me a line and um, I'll make some more tutorials on how I process images uh, so that they look a certain way for and if it appeals to you and you want to give it a go then um, please feel free to subscribe to the channel as well uh, so hopefully see you next time and thank you for viewing bye bye for now